Hello Canvas users, this is Marie Henderson. I'm going to demonstrate for you wrapping up your Canvas semester. We're going to put end dates on courses and make sure that students access to courses is restricted to those end dates and then we'll make copies of your courses so that they'll be ready for your work this summer and or into the, the fall semester of next year. So thank you to Ted Foster for allowing me to use his courses as a guinea pig for my video. I'm going to open his semester two course here and navigate to settings. Even after the course ends, please notice that you will be able to access student work uh, so that you can download examples that you can use as demonstrations in future semesters, but you will not be able to change the grades past this date that you put on here. So you'll notice here Ted has marked uh, May 24th and that's a week past when grades are due. That way any changes that need to be made can be can be altered as needed. So don't please don't put May 17th um, our last day of school as your end date so that so that any changes that need to be made can be made. I would at least go a week past the end of the semester. And then make sure that both of these boxes here are checked. You want students to only participate during or sorry between those dates and you want to restrict students from viewing the course after the end date. That way they can't go in and give your content uh, from this semester to next year's students. Make sure once you've made those changes that you scroll all the way down to the bottom and click this blue update course details otherwise your changes will not be saved. Okay, so once we've added in dates, we want to go ahead and make a copy that we can use to work on over the summer and into the school year. We'll worry about getting our students connected to this copy once the semester gets, gets closer, but you want to rename your course. You don't necessarily need to put a date in this name. We just need to know that this is, this is the second semester uh, part of, of Ted's shell, and I am going to actually use the word shell here so that we can distinguish between this one and the one that had the students enrolled in it. So we want to do the semester two. Don't necessarily need a start and end date on it, but if you do put one, make sure it's the 2020 school year. We can go ahead, if you would like, and adjust the dates so that you just need to shift them around a little bit. Some people like to bring in all of their content and other people like to only bring in uh, the early part of the semester, like just the assignments or modules for that first month of school, because some of those lists can get very long for students and make it harder to navigate in the course. So for right now, I'm going to shift the due dates. So we want to make January 2nd of 2019, something similar in 2020. So scrolling on over here to 2020, just something slightly before the semester, and then in May of 2020, something slightly after the semester. Again, we're going to be able to make changes to this when we actually get the students attached to this content in um, in the uh, in the fall or in the spring semester. But I would encourage you to remove the date up here as we don't want that uh, this course to fall into past enrollments. So I've given my new course a new name that includes the word shell, noting that I this is just where I can practice and play and update materials as needed, but that students are not attached. And I've decided to bring in all the content and I have shifted my dates in my course uh, from January of this year to January of next year, and that didn't hold when I when I deleted that other date, so I'm going to put that back in here. And then May of next year. All right, and then I want to scroll down here and click Create Course. Okay, so once we get here to this page and this runs, our new course is created, we want to go back and make sure that we have done the same thing for our fall courses. And actually, I would also encourage you to put in dates, though you don't probably need copies of your seminar and or TA and or GPS or whatever it is that, that you're looking at there, your, your uh, freshman academy, your academy courses, any of those things. 
though you probably don't need a copy of those, you may uh, want to go in and put end dates on those. It just cleans up our students' accounts. Again, sometimes they end up with a, a long list of courses, just like you do, and we want those to fall to past enrollments so that they're not interfering with their navigation of Canvas going forward. All right, so as this finishes up, I'll show you where you can make sure to find your, your fall courses in case you didn't have a chance to make copies yet of those. So I'll come back on here once this is finished. All right, so now my copy has finished. Please notice there are seven issues here. Those are almost always links that are missing. So you always want to check your links, and, they're, and they are typically part of um, a page that you've created in some way, shape, or form. So you want to go back in and make sure that each of your links works in your course. Okay, so to check on your fall courses, if we go here to courses and then all courses, you may find that you've already made a fall course, and it looks like Ted already made a copy here, uh, but if you don't see a copy that you made back near Christmas break of your first semester course, you may find it down here in past enrollments. So you can scroll down and see maybe the course I used in first semester is back here in past enrollments, and I can still open it and I can still make a copy of it. I'd encourage you to look for one that is marked with the term as 2018 19 because those are all of this year's courses uh, so if we scroll down here here is ted's first semester course again i already found his copy up there so i'm not going to make another copy but if you just open this course and go to settings and click on copy this course there at the right you'll be able to make a copy of your fall course as well as always if you have questions please don't hesitate to email me i hope you have a great day